Hello and welcome. I'm Jenny Hall. Thanks for joining me today. We're going to do some live crafting. I'm really excited to share with you today. I have some exciting new things to show you. Today we're going to be creating a scrapbook page. I haven't done a scrapbook page on a live video in some time. Hi Candice, bonjour. And for Christmas, I got a number of gift cards from family and I tend to try to pull them together if possible to get something that I can really use. Hi Fran! And one of the things that I have really, really been looking at is to get a smartphone printer. Isn't that exciting? Hi Robin! So this is the one that I chose to get. This is from Fuji and it's the Instax, I know that's a kind of a tongue twister, Instax. So Instax is how they say it, I'm guessing. And it's called Instax Share Smartphone Printer SP2. There might be a bit of a glare, but when we turn the camera around, then it will have, um, it'll have a better look at it. But what this is, it's a little small device, and I've got the device here to show you guys on close up whenever we get the camera flipped. But it's this little tiny thing, and what it does is it prints out from your cell phone. Pretty cool, huh? It does take special film that you get from Fuji. Fuji has been a leader in the if you want to call these Polaroid photos. They've been a leader in the new wave of Polaroid photos. And this is the size that the photo comes out. It's two inches by three inches. Hi, Joanne. And it's very quick, very easy. I can't print one out with you live, but I have recorded to where when this video goes onto YouTube, then it will, I'll be able to cut the video, splice in something that shows how it prints out and what it looks like and how fast it goes and how easy it is. And I'll be able to put that on YouTube. So if you're watching on YouTube, then we're going to put that portion of the video right here. So this is the little size of the photograph that it prints out and it you can depending on your photo whether you print it out this way which would be portrait or this way which is landscape if you took your your pretend like this is my phone and you took the photo like this then it's going to print out with a photo oriented like this but if you print it out like if you took the photo like this then it's going to print it out like this so it's pretty simple. Um, Donna is saying, they say most of the millennials have never touched an actual photo. I agree with that. I agree with that. And I think that it is difficult with all of the modern technology that we use. It's difficult to get, you know, we all have a phone handy and we snap a photo. And some of those photos are phenomenal. But we have to like download applications to go and get them printed at the drugstore, and uh, it, it is sad. Um, and and I'll recap it for you in just a second, Joanne. It, it it is sad. Donna says that people don't have the tangible photos, and that is the number one reason why I scrapbook is for my kids. Because my husband and I, number one, we started our family when we were much older. We were not in our 20s. <laughs> I'm 50. So you could just guess that, you know, my husband and I, you know, we're not going to be around for as much of our children's lives as we would like. 
So I need, I feel a very strong need to leave a legacy that of their childhood that's not just, oh, let's get on the computer and see if mom saves some photos and some videos of this. Um, you know, I want, I want there to be more something tangible with what my kids are looking at. I want them to look at a photo and then the memories that I write down that go with the photo. So, hi Kathy, how are you? So that's why I wanted to get this little guy here and this is called a smartphone printer. So we'll take a really good look at it after I flip the camera around and today we are going to create a scrapbook page. Um, we're actually doing a double layout because I have already done the first part. Um, Kathy is sharing that she did two high school scrapbooks for her niece's high school graduation last summer. Her buddies were amazed to see all the pics as she was an avid basketball and soccer player for the high school. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you for sharing that, Kathy. That's wonderful. So we're going to do something with some photographs and I've already printed them out so that we have them ready. And this is incredibly easy to use. These little smartphone printers, there's lots of them on the market. They range about $100. Some of them are a little bit more. Some of them are, you put the photograph or you put the photo paper in and it prints them out just like a Polaroid does from Kodak. In fact, Kodak also has a smartphone printer out. It didn't get as much ratings and reviews as Fuji did. I felt com more comfortable with Fuji. But what they, what they do is some of them just pop a photo out like this. Zip, and this is supposed to be held upright. And then some others kind of lay down flatbed and the photograph goes out with one pass of an ink cartridge. It goes back in and it goes back out with another coating of ink and it goes back in and it goes back out with yet a third coating of ink. It goes back in and then it goes back out again. That's a lot of in and out. And um, some of these you have to actually add ink cartridges to. That's another pro for the Fuji Instax Share is that I just put in the cartridges. That's it. I put in the photo cartridge, it does the rest, just like a Polaroid camera, just like it. So we're going to kind of uh, check out exactly, you know, what it looks like close up. And we're gonna do another scrapbook page to match one that I've already created. So I want to give a little word, a little shout out to Stampin' Up's amazing Stampin' Trimmer. Most of us do have this Stampin' Trimmer, but some people don't yet know about the Stampin' Trimmer. Well, this wonderful little trimmer here is very lightweight. I'm holding it with one hand and it just kind of flips around. It is very sturdy. This is the only trimmer that I've ever owned. I have a friend who she just replaced her trimmer after years and years and years. But what I like the best about this trimmer is the fact that it has a fold out arm that, con that literally goes back in and hides. So it's small, it fits inside the craft and carry tote bag. So when this arm is extended, I can cut 12 by 12 paper. So this is the only cutter that I own. This is, the, except for my big mama over here from Fiskars is the one that does the chipboard and um, really heavy papers that I that I can't fit on here because I do I cut cardboard sometimes for mixed media and you know things for the kids' school. So this little this little trimmer is a wonder. And if you are looking to get an all-in-one stamp, uh, you know, paper trimmer, Stampin' Ups Stampin' Trimmer is is the best one. It is just. It's hands down for me, the best one. And I've tried a few others with friends crafting and I'm, I can't say enough good things about it. So if you are looking to get into scrapbooking or you already are and you wanna to try to get more out of what the products you're using, this Stampin' Trimmer is not expensive. It does come with replacement blades and it's the only one you need. So <laughs> I hope that that helps but I'm going to set this little baby aside 
I just wanted to give a little product endorsement for that because it is really so great. I love it so much. Here is a look at the first page that I created and I know there might be a little bit of a glare, but we're going to go through the steps of making a scrapbook page just like this that will go for a double layout. It's not gonna be very complicated and I'll show you exactly how to do it. So I'm using some papers. All the products that I'm using are available right now. They're not retired. This is a Christmas page. And you might look at this piece of paper and think, wow, that doesn't look very Christmassy. And you're right, it doesn't. But on the opposite side of the page, there is just red, which is lovely lipstick. And it has this tall, uh, small dotted dash line pattern. So this is what the page is gonna look like. We're going to use some of the new foil paper that's a celebration product. You'll be able to see this page better when I flip the camera, no worries. And then this is got a big giant watercolor wash. I've also done some die cuts and the color scheme here is a variation of greens and lipstick, lovely lipstick. So I know lovely lipstick is not a traditional Christmas color, but that's okay. I want to use paper that I have. You could actually adapt this design into whatever you have on hand, or you could go for this really fun color combination by getting this package of paper in the Occasions catalog, as well as this really great foil. Remember I showed you guys that foil before? It's a celebration level one choice. So this is one fun way that we're gonna use it. And there were so many sheets in the pack. There's like literally, I think it was eight or 12. It's really, really fun. So I'm going to turn the camera around now and we're going to get started. If you have any questions along the way, then please feel free to ask. And if I can't see the question right away, then I will come back and answer the question after the fact. Okay, so this is what we're looking at as far as our colors go. This is what it looks like to use those little photographs. Aren't they cool? And the way they lay, they can go in either direction. If you haven't yet done so, I would very much appreciate if you would share this video so that we can have more crafting people join us together. So we're gonna set this aside and I'll show you a good look at the smartphone printer. Here are the photographs that I'm going to be using today. And these are all from Christmas. So here is a look at what the printer actually looks like on the box. It's called Instax Share, and I got the SP2. I think there's an SP1 that might be outdated, but when you get the box, this is basically all it is. And when you open it, then there is some paperwork here on the top, and then you kind of pull this thing open here and there is a cord that you use for charging because this has its own battery that you insert. And then the, cam the printer is in a little nice little wrapper here. So when I'm not using this and I, st I store it back in here, but inside this little protective paper. So that's what it looks like when it comes to you. In order to use it, you will need to have a smartphone. And this is, it is very much called a smartphone printer. I believe you can use an iPad as well. Hi Leonie, how are you? And I have gotten a few photographs printed out. I can't print while we're doing a Facebook Live because I use my phone up here in order to do the printing, or in order to do the filming. So that's something that I was able to do just a little bit differently. And if you're watching on YouTube, then you've already seen exactly how this prints out. But what happens is it's straight up. I go through the motions on my cell phone and 
it basically when I hit print, it takes a few seconds and then it just goes up. It sticks here. So I take it away from the printer and then it's all white and slowly the color develops, just like a classic Polaroid, just like it. And I tell you what, I love this. I love having these little bitty photos. They're just, they're just perfect. Um, Amory is asking, is, can you use it with an iPhone? Yes, I do have an iPhone and that's what I used it with. So yes, absolutely. Okay, so to do our project today, we're gonna to do a quick scrapbook page. It's not going to have a whole lot. Um, I guess what my theory is behind this is that it is going to be very quick to create and then attach my photographs. And I'll, oftentimes with scrapbooking, I don't have a lot of time to be able to devote to like I can't sit down for four hours and make one page. I need to work a little faster than that. So what, and I do like to use the products that I, that I try to feature on my blog and, that people can purchase. This is a package of paper that more or less is geared at Valentine's Day. However, just looking at this page, it could very easily be Christmas. All it is is a red with little dot dashes. That's Christmas to me. That looks just good enough to be Christmas. And we have for celebration, show you what the paper pack looks like. This is the Grapefruit Grove and Lovely Lipstick Foil Sheets. And as you can tell, I have really been using this paper. I can't get enough of it. It is phenomenal especially the Grapefruit Grove. And I'll show you, if I can get my hand down in there, that it does look holographic. Isn't that the coolest? I just love it. This is the hot ticket. This is the, the one that I think is going to really get the most use in my crafting during celebration, which runs from January through the end of March. It's a free per if it's a free item, you cannot purchase it. It only can be earned with your $50 product purchase. Thank you guys for sharing. Hi Brianna. Now, I'm also going to be using, so I've got I've got a piece of this cut and this is lovely lipstick and so is this. When we get everything together, then there's not as much of a contrast between the two reds. This is a piece of shimmery white cardstock. I want to do a watercolor wash, and in order to do that, I need to have a big enough piece of paper that can actually handle taking on some watercolor. Shimmery white cardstock is that cardstock for me with my Stampin' Up! products. There is watercolor paper that Stampin' Up! provides, but it's a much smaller size, but the shimmery white I can cut a big piece, which is eight and a half by eight and a half, and I can add water to it with no problem. And here is the layer made of that beautiful foil, and this is eight and three quarters by eight and three quarters. That's going to be my layer, and it's gonna help this watercolor wash lay down flat. And my page base is 12 inches by 12 inches. So this is a classic sized layout, um, scrapbook layout, <laughs> sorry about that. All right, so let is, let's get started on making a watercolor wash. So how about if you leave me a comment and raise your hand if you're new to creating a watercolor wash. I would love to hear what your experience is with watercolor. Watercoloring is not the same thing as a watercolor wash and I'll explain that as we go. So there are two forms of water that I'm going to use, and that is going to be the aqua painter filled with tap water and the Stampin' Spritzer that's filled with tap water as well. The greens that I'm going to use are Tranquil Tide, Old Olive, and Granny Apple Green. I know these kind of seem like they have some different color hues, because Lemon Lime Twist would normally be a better pairing for these two. 
but I really want to have that kapow that the granny apple green will provide when I add it into certain areas. So you can see here, this is the granny apple green that I used. Anne Marie is new to watercolor wash. All right, wonderful. Thank you for putting your hand up because I will make sure that I explain things in a little bit more detail to be able to help you guys feel more successful with this technique. So with these colors, I'm gonna go ahead and get them all open now. This is Granny Apple Green, Tranquil Tide, and Old Olive. If there's not any ink pooled up in the lid of your stamp pad, the way I bring up the ink is to push from the back of the stamp pad And like magic, it presses up against that other side and there's a little ink to work with. So you'll also need a paper towel. Anytime I watercolor, I always have a paper towel handy. And that's for a few reasons. The first reason is to make sure that I clean my brush in between every color or sometimes in between the same color. And that is because sometimes I want to spread the existing color around and other times I want to make sure that I move something around without adding any color at all to it. So I'm going to start off, this is going to be a very large watercolor wash and one way to get a large amount of color, or I'm sorry, a large amount of water onto a panel is to use a a big giant paintbrush that's maybe an inch wide and you can dip it in clean water and just kind of brush it around or another way is to use a sprayer a spray bottle so that's what I'm going to do today is to use the Stampin Spritzer I'm gonna spray around I'm not going all the way to the edge and this is going to get me a better even coverage of water in a faster amount of time. And already you can see that the paper is taking up the water and it is absorbing it. And now with my aqua painter, without pushing the barrel, I'm just making, evening out some of the water that's there. If your paper starts to push up on you, then it is a good idea to use a little piece of washi tape and just secure the edges and that might help to keep it a little bit more under control. So I'm going to start with a neutral color and that's going to be my old olive. And I'm going to do old olive, not everywhere because I want other colors to show up and not compete. So I'm going to leave some white spaces in between the old olive coloring. Hello, Karen, how are you? Oh, there's the cuckoo. So all I've done right now is to dip up some old olive, spread it around because we have already created a wet area on our paper, then it's going to take the the water is going to take the ink color and spread it out evenly so i'm going to do this in a couple of places usually i aim for three and i create with a visual triangle and i hope that you can see exactly how easy this is it's very very simple now how about adding a little color and give the barrel a squeeze as it touches the paper and watch what happens. When you give that squeeze, then the water just kind of floods out and turns what the water would normally just be clean tap water, it turns it into a color. It's like a magic. That, my friends, is a watercolor wash. That's basically what it is. It washes over the paper. So now I've got a foundation color of Old Olive. I'm going to bring in the color that I really want to stand out, and that is the Granny Apple Green. But before I touch it, I'm going to make sure all of the Old Olive is off my brush by rubbing it on the paper towel. Good morning, Betty, how are you? 
And now we're going to take the second color, and this color is going to go in between some of the areas that I just made old olive. And as it pushes over another color and we have fresh water, it's going to give this watercolor line here. And I love that line in the pooling, it's beautiful. So I am giving a little squeeze as I flood the paint out. And remember, we already have our paper wet and we're working with shimmery white. So the granny apple green is really going to be the, the bright point that stands out on this watercolor wash. So each time I touch it, I'm pushing the barrel and then I try to make sure that I make some contact and I keep my edges a little bit more fluid. So can you see exactly how simple this is? We're going to, because the paper's rising, we're going to have a pooling effect on the side where there is, the color is in contact with the dry paper. And that is part of the beauty of a watercolor wash. Thank you guys for sharing the video. So let's take a look at the companion sheet in our layout. And you can see that there are some high points. It's not a circle, it's not a square. It's just like a big squash of color. And I left some white areas and we've got some dark areas. And we're gonna try to kind of keep this along the same vein. So I'm gonna soften this just a little bit. And then I wanna add in just a little bit more of the granny apple green and I think we'll probably end up coming back to it again just to make sure we get lots of that pretty green color. If you are familiar with quilting, I am astounded by the number of quilters that we have that are crossovering into card making. But one thing that I learned with quilting is that there's, there's a certain kind of pattern that looks uniform and there's another kind of pattern that doesn't but when i was doing free motion quilting then basically what it did was to create an even pattern that was not symmetrical it was not organized at all except in the fact that it was just very random so the the quilting would kind of go almost like puzzle pieces and i learned that with free motion quilting i had some wonderful teachers and that was something that I also apply into all of my crafting, including card making. It just kind of works out that way that it, it works out. Kathy, you are a fellow quilter. Cool. So I've gotten some dry areas here. I'm going to wet this a little bit more before, you can see I didn't get all the green out. I'm gonna wet this again before I add my third green. I could use my spray again, but I'm okay doing it this way. Now this is Tranquil Tide. This is going to be a, a very bold color, so I need to squeeze and get that color moving around. It wants to kind of settle down in the, in the low places of the paper. But I want this green to be very tame. I don't want this green to overtake everything. And Tranquil Tide is a blue green. So I thought that would be something that would create a bit more pullback and bring my eye deeper into the paper, all of the colors that are mixing around, instead of having it just be color, color, color. It's going to appear to my eye as if there's colors and then, oh, look, deep into it and there's going to be a much darker, deeper color. So um, in those wet areas, I'm adding in a bit more and now I'm gonna wipe off the excess color from my brush so that I can move around the, the paint or the ink that is already on the paper. 
And then I can soften this line here just with a clean water from my brush. If I want this to have a bit more transition, like this hard line I've got over here, but I really love those hard lines, but I'm gonna soften it just a little bit just to show you how easy that is. As it's drying up, it's going to leave those puddle marks, which are part of the beauty of the watercolor wash. So I'm gonna add some over here as well. And we're just about finished. I can mix this color in with the existing color that's already there. I just really like adding this type of, of a look. And because I'm making a scrapbook page, this can be a big giant area. And another thing is, and I'm gonna go back with the old olive here for a moment, is that this is something that I love to do. And because this is a scrapbook page that I'm creating for my children, then they'll know that mom loves to do art, mom loves art, and that mom loves to do watercoloring. And that I wanted to include a piece of watercolor in with what I was working on. So it just kind of all, to me, makes sense. I'm glad you like those colors, Philomena. They are, they are not something that may be typically paired together, but it's, and remember, we're gonna cover a lot of this. So it's going to create a background and we're gonna be adding our photos over it. So I want to add some flick marks to kind of bring up a little bit more and create more depth. So I've just gotten some of the color here. This is Tranquil Tide. I'm going to knock the brush edge on my finger. And this is what happens because the paper is still wet. Then I can get more concentrated ink. And because the paper is still wet, then it's going to take those little, those little flicks and it's going to kind of pull them out and spread them. And that's going to give me a bit more of that soft, hazy, Christmas tree, shiny bulb look. And I don't have to completely cover it, but I want it to have a good little amount there. So does anybody have any questions so far about watercolor wash before we move on to the next step? And I've cleaned my brush just now. And we're done with the greens, so I'm going to close them all up. And unfortunately, we're gonna have a little bit of noise with drying the paper, but it's a necessity to dry the paper before we move on. So I'm, I have my heat tool on low, and I'm going to do my best to get this done as quickly as possible. But this is the simplicity of a watercolor wash. It really is just this easy. It took me a while before I really felt comfortable with what the results were for doing watercoloring, especially the watercolor wash, because I, I didn't feel like I was doing what I was supposed to do. But the thing that I have learned along the way is that there's no right or wrong. It's just, it's just, creating for the sake of creating art. And that's what really helped me be able to loosen up about watercoloring. Aw, thank you, Anne-Marie. I'm, I'm glad that this way is, this, this teaching method is helping you. So I want to look kind of like my lights are creating a little bit of a shiny spot where the wet places are and I'm using that to my advantage to be able to see where the, the fluid needs to be dry. But this is a great opportunity if you have any questions, then this is a great chance for me able to, I can answer you those questions now. So I'm going to get most of the fluid from this side of the paper before I turn it over. I just don't want anything to be dripping. Okay, now I can turn it over a bit and 
you might be able to see the shadow where the water actually has come all the way up. It didn't penetrate the back side of the paper, but that's a great thing about shimmery white. Shimmery white is, it's like the unsung hero in the watercolor <laughs> because it holds the water so well and it has the beautiful sparkle to it. It's lightweight and it's just, it, it's just such a versatile paper. So I'm going to turn it back over again and see if I can work from this side. And you may notice that when I heat from one side, then the paper kind of goes like, like this and crinkles up on the sides. That's normal. And when you turn it over, then it's going to crinkle back the opposite direction. So a lot of times I see people that will, they'll, they'll do a little bit of heat from one side and a little bit of heat from another side and that's going to help the watercolor paper, or in this case, the shimmery white paper, to be able to lay down without much fuss. All right, so I'm gonna use my hand and make sure that I've, I've got a couple of really wet spots here before we move forward. So this is a Christmas themed project and I'm participating in a blog hop this coming Sunday. If you're watching on YouTube then the blog hop is happening now but I'm, I'm participating in a blog hop that is only scrapbook pages. So if you have a desire to get more ideas for scrapbooking pages with a theme of winter or holidays then you can go over to my blog at Jenny Hall Design and just hop through all the blogs and get lots of ideas. Looks like we are dry enough now. So I'm gonna remind you, this is what the project is that we're looking to, we're not gonna duplicate, we're making a companion page. And if there's a piece of the watercolor that I think I'm not really fond of, like this, this little image here, I love, 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 love that. So I wanna make sure that it does stand out, that I don't cover it with a photo. But what if maybe I feel like there's too much of this in one area, then I can make sure that I put a photo right over it. This is one of the great things about doing a giant watercolor wash like this, is that it works out so well for me. Now you may notice that this piece of paper does not want to lay down and that's typical whenever you do some sort of watercolor. So what I like to have handy is a very strong adhesive and there's a few of them that come to mind. One of them is the tear and tape adhesive. It's also known as score tape and this is a double sided tape that is um, it has a release paper on the back and this is the strongest adhesive that I work with. This is my go-to whenever I have something that I really, really don't want to move. The only drawback is that once it's placed, it's there for life. And I make sure that when using it, I use my nail or you could use a bone folder to really push in on that line and activate that adhesive so that I will be able to remove the release paper. Otherwise, it gives me a little bit of trouble. So you could just continue putting different pieces here or if you are not bothered with the fact that it has a little poofiness, and this is going to go inside of a scrapbook clear page protector. So I'm cool with this part not being secured down. The edges being secured down are perfectly fine with me. So I'm just going to use the edge of my scissor lift up the backing. If I were using liquid glue then it would definitely act, it would, um, it would act up, I guess is the word I'm looking for. 
it would not behave well with the with the paper if I used a large amount of glue because this is watercolor paper and it just would behave differently. So I'm going to put my brush away here, make sure we get some some space. And this foil is one quarter of an inch larger than this panel. So if you just are joining in, you'll see that this is eight and a half by eight and a half inches, and this is eight and three quarter by eight and three quarter. This paper wants to kind of bow up as well, so before I work on getting things adhered, I'm going to kind of turn it back the opposite direction so it'll lay flat. All right, so I'm going to line this up with knowing the fact that once I get it in place, it's not moving. Oh, well, I didn't get it perfect, but that's okay. My kids will know that mama's not perfect either. And I'm just going to press really hard to adhere it, to activate that adhesive between the foil and the shimmery white cardstock. So the, the shimmery white cardstock is still rippling this a little bit, but that's okay because we're going to secure it down. Karen is asking, can we take a hot iron to it? I don't know. I would be afraid. But if you're a brave soul, you can let us know next week if it worked for you. I, I wouldn't because I would use the heat tool for it. In fact, my preferred method on watercoloring is to let it dry naturally. And it does tend to just flatten itself back out very nicely. So let's take a look at this over here. And I see that the lines are going this way. So this can be the left-hand page or the right-hand page. And I'm going to have the dashed lines go the opposite direction to kind of complement each other as they're in the layout together on opposite pages. But this is gonna be cool that it looks the same. We're just going to decorate it a little differently. So Karen is going to, if you try it, Karen, let us know with the ironing board. So now I can be a little bit more flexible with my adhesive. You could use some liquid glue. I'm going to use snail adhesive because it's going to get things done a little faster for me here since we're crafting together. and I am going to use quite a bit. Again, if liquid glue is your thing, then you might want to use it. Just be very careful. And because this can go any direction at all, then this is when I would probably look to see how do I want to orient this page. I think this would look, this is the way we painted. I like it like this. And I'm just going to center it here. A T ruler would work really well if you need any assistance with getting it straight. I often will do that. I'm going to press to activate. And again, it's going to pull up this paper again, which is totally okay because we're going to have this inside of a page protector and that will help it to, to kind of lay itself out flat. So we've gone in a relatively quick amount of time in creating a custom background and using some really fun effect layers and I'm really excited about how this is shaped up. When I created the other project that goes along with this, then I was just so excited. I just worked on it to where I just was enjoying myself and, oh, excuse me, and I think that's part of what the feel is and what the children will will end up with is, you know, the, the fun that went into the project. I have a greeting on the other page that says Merry Christmas and I've established that it was for 2018, but I'm not going to put, uh, this is where the fourth picture would normally be, so I don't feel the need to have to put any more die cuts on this page. Instead, I can concentrate more on the feel of the photographs. So we have a picture of Nana here with Trip, and they're sitting together. 
I want it to include this because it will, it'll enforce that, you know, remind the kids that Nana spent the holiday with us this Christmas, this past Christmas. We've got some colors here that I want to work on balancing. There's blue and blue. There's actually blue in all of them. And I think this is a bright picture, so I'm going to try to balance that with the blues over here. And this can kind of be an opportunity for me to set the pictures a little wonky. Like I did in this, this layout here. This one is more straight, but I made sure to put these a little wonky. Hello, Anne, how are you? So I think I like them in this sort of layout here. They're not too close together, nothing is straight. I've got this beautiful part of the watercolor wash that's showing through. I can move this down a little bit, in fact, to kind of take less of those. There's a blob that came off from the Tranquil Tide, so I can kind of adjust this just a little bit. And once I get them pretty much in place, then I can go ahead and secure the pictures because anything that gets secured on top of them will be okay, but getting them in place is, is really important too. So here is some snail adhesive and this works for me to be able to adhere them. This picture is my oldest son, Trip. I had made a banana split cake, which is kind of like a, a refrigerator dessert. And he has part of the cream that he got to lick. And that was, that was my silly boy with all of the cream on his face. He was so happy. <laughs> Little things like that are things that I want my kids to remember, the happy times. And this is Nate and I, and Nate was showing that he had just lost a tooth. In fact, he's got four missing teeth in that, in that photograph. In his mouth, there were four missing teeth. <laughs> he lost them all so quickly. And this photograph here is my husband and my oldest son, Tripp, and they, um, they both fell asleep. Both of them fell asleep on the couch together. For Christmas which I grabbed my quick cell phone and took a snap and that's one of the reasons why I really like this smartphone printer because it lets me go ahead and print things out just right here at home without having to order prints and have them ship in all right so now we can do some touches to kind of get this I'll, I'll put these together and see if we can kind of get a look together at how the layout will be. Give a little extra room here. And I want there to be um, kind of like a cohesion of decoration on both of, on both of them. And this is a really great opportunity to use up some scraps of glimmer paper with a small punch. This is the Christmas Bulb Builder Punch. And just using the little, little pieces here and there are really perfect. I think I can squeeze this over just a little more so you can get it better, better look here. So whenever I punch out, because this is something that it doesn't have to be perfect or perfectly formed, I'm just going to punch out the actual bulb and not this piece here that would be the, the little base of the bulb. So I'm going to do that by bringing the edge of the paper, not down into that other section on the punch, but just here. And there's a perfect little bulb. One thing that struck me about this project whenever I had finished it was that I was making this for my kids. 
and I, and I wanted it to be something that the kids would enjoy. And they do enjoy sparkle that's not going to come off as glitter in their hands because they, they don't like glitter. They like looking at glitter, but they don't want it to come away. So the great thing about the glimmer paper is that you can rub it all day and it's, it's gonna stay on the paper. So this is a great way for me to use up some of the things that I think that the kids were really happy with. And they like red, both of them are fans of red and using lovely lipstick as the feature color here was a really great way for me to integrate some of the things that they like onto the project. It's not very refined or arts, arty, but I think that this page overall is something my kids really like. Yes, Betty's bringing up that those little printers are great. They are, and affordable too. I was really surprised. I thought I would end up spending much more money than it ended up costing, and it's a great way to use up those gift cards. I bought mine on Amazon. All right, so we're gonna kind of bring this together here. And I have used some string. This is the Silver Baker's Twine. This is going to kind of lay as a connection and Nathaniel has already torn the, the the string off of this a couple of times so I'm going to have to get these pages put away very quickly <laughs> before he is going to deconstruct them because you know he's he's my little engineer he wants to put together and take everything apart so I'm going to work in some colors just mixing around it doesn't have to be perfect. We're not looking for perfection. This is just something that, you know, my kids are gonna love these memories. When I'm creating my cards, I have a tendency to want to go a little bit more into what other people are gonna like. But when I'm doing scrapbook pages, then I find a different a different goal and I see something that my kids will like and that's like my driving force whenever I create scrapbook pages. I'm going to add a couple of these over on the edges too and then this is what we're matching is this one here so we don't want to add too many so I think I'll save some of these and put them back a little bit and then create a few little lengths of this silver baker's twine which I've just about used all of it there it's been such a great resource so I'm going to use some mini glue dots to anchor the, the actual twine I'm going to give it just a little circle just to add a little something special instead of just being a straight piece. You can see that there's just a little tiny loop there. And I'll do another one here as it hangs off the page on this side and make another little tiny loop. Pick these up. All right, I need to move this glue dot but fortunately I can, that's why mini glue dots are my favorite. There we go. And now it's just gonna be a matter of adding these cute little bulbs. Snail will work. You could actually go with Stampin' Dimensionals or liquid glue. This is fine with me because it is a permanent adhesive whenever it dries. Oh, let's get one more here on this side. Just to give it a little balance. And then I have an idea over here to create a small bow because I did not create a bow on the other page. 
Instead, it has the die cut words. All right, so I'm going to use another mini glue dot right over here with these little little guys and then I can just trim this down a little bit easy peasy what do you guys think I'm glad you guys like them. Wonderful. So we can add some more of the little swag lines. Something very quick. And what I what I liked about this particular project is the fact that I got to create some watercolor. I got to create a unique background, which for me, that's a special experience. And it's also something special for my children because they know that that's part of me that I'm gonna put into a project. But the rest of it really goes together fast. Very, very, very fast. And as we said earlier, a lot of us don't have a tremendous amount of time for scrapbooking. Some of us do, and that's wonderful. But when I'm doing scrapbooking pages, then I find that I really want to get a lot of pages done in a shorter amount of time so that I don't lose out on those memories but I'm able to keep everything fresh in my mind. Well, that's not gonna go, is it? Okay, improvise. My piece is not long enough, so I'm gonna attach it down here. To the bottom, there we go. I'll just attach it right there. So we've got a lot of this thread that's spaced around kind of evenly. And again, this is not gonna be perfect. This is um, just my love for my children being documented for Christmas. And this is what the double layout will look like. And I've got some sequins here. This is from the adhesive back sequins. This is the soft seafoam sequin and I just placed them around here and there. And now we've got room on this particular piece here to do some journaling. And I typically do my journaling with the Stampin' Up! journaling pens. They work really great. And I've got room to write underneath on the page. Or if you used a permanent kind of a, I'm not sure if this will work on the, on the actual photo paper, but you could use, I know a Sharpie marker would definitely work. A Stampin' Blends should work as well, but I haven't tried that yet, so I can't tell you whether or not how, how it works. But, oh, thanks, Judy. I'm, th I'm glad you like these. This, this was very simple. I know that initially it took a little bit longer to create the watercolor wash, but I just really feel like this is a super unique look and that it's going to it's going to be something my kids like because that very vibrant punch of the lovely lipstick and it allows me a chance to use some of my beautiful celebration paper some scraps of glitter paper and some twine it just incorporates a lot into it now this over here has merry christmas thinlets and i did some gold emboss on only half of the words and this is on lovely lipstick cardstock. So this was this was a little fun element that I was able to add. But this was, I knew I was gonna have, on this opposite side, I would have more photographs. So once I add the journaling in here by adding the words, then the black writing is gonna balance out very nicely. And this will be a, just a, a nice double layout for my kids. So I'm gonna turn the camera back around 
So this is the page that we created today to go along with the page that I had previously created. And I really like how the loves, lovely lipstick has translated itself out into a Christmas color instead of being Valentine's Day, which it's red, it's an unusual red, but it works for me. So how I do my scrapbook pages, as I explained a little bit before, is I'm really aiming at what my kids like, and I'm aiming at something that's gonna strike a chord with them. And this really pretty foil paper, if I turn it in, in kind of on the side, you can see the foil paper is really eye-catching. You can see it up along the edge here. That it That is really what caught my, my youngest son, Nathaniel. That's what really caught, caught his eye, other than all of the sparkly stuff. But he really, really liked this first page that I created. So um, that foil just really works out so nice. Well, thank you all so much for joining me today. I am going to do a giveaway. I'll announce the winners later um, from last week. I have the card for last week to send out. And because I can't send out the scrapbook pages and keep them for my kids at the same time, then for the giveaway this week, then I will send out just a mysterious handmade card. And it'll, it'll be one of my blog cards, probably. Something I've created in a previous video. But if you would not mind sharing the video, indicating that you have shared the video, then I'll be able to go in and, and what I do is I track all of the people that have shared and then I put them into the, the drawing for receiving the prize. So that's, uh, that's a lot of fun for me. I always let my kids help with the drawing. So it's, it's something that they get to participate in as well. If you haven't already signed up for your on stage, then I think registration is filling up pretty fast. So if you're a demonstrator and you want to attend on stage in April and you haven't yet signed up, then get to it. We want you guys to go to on stage. I, and if you're going to Atlantic City, then please take the time and find me and say hello. I would absolutely love to see you all and share a quick hug and swap a card. I'll be bringing lots and lots of swap cards. Loads of swap cards. <laughs> and if you are going to Atlantic City, then I am hosting a watercolor technique class with my friend Charlotte Mallet. We have spaces available in the morning and the afternoon session. There are some details on my blog at jennyhalldesign.com. You can search in the little search bar for watercolor technique class and it'll bring up a post for you to be able to find that information. It's also here on my Facebook page. There is a link in the watercolor, to the watercolor technique class and you can reserve it. it. The cost of the class is $55, but if you reserve before February, then we're giving a $5 discount. And I have to say that the afternoon class is filling up really, really fast. We're so thankful that all of you guys want to come and craft with us and learn to use watercolor. I'm sure one of the things that you're going to learn is going to be something you can take away from the class and use it in your crafting, which is really what means the most to Charlotte and I, is to be able to impact and, and help everybody. Hi, Nicola. I'm glad that you were able to pop in. I'm sorry, but we're almost finished for the day. You could go in and watch the replay and have all the information there. Now again, if you guys need anything, you have any questions, then just leave me a question here and I'll do my best to come back and answer it. If you're watching on YouTube, please take a few moments and click that little red button that says subscribe and that will help me to be able to bring you more. Now I'm almost at 8,000 subscribers. Yay! Can you believe it? It's hard for me to believe that um, 8,000 people want to be able to, you know, connect with me and learn through crafting, but it's, it's absolutely fantastic. And when I get to number 8,000, I'm going to do a giveaway on my blog. And when I do, I'll be sure to come back in and, and add something. But as soon as it rolls over to 8,000, then I'm going to do a big giveaway. So if you haven't already subscribed on YouTube, 
then go over to YouTube to my to my channel, Jenny Hall, Independent Stampin' Up! Demonstrator, and then there's a little red button there that says subscribe. And beside that button, there's a little bell. And if you touch that bell, then it will notify you every time I post a new video. So that way you won't miss out. Thank you all so much for joining me today. I appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule to spend with me. I'm happy to have shared my ideas with you for scrapbooking for holidays. And this is, you could actually turn this into Valentine's Day theme if that's what you, if that's what you have your photos for. The name again of my little printer is the Instax Share SP2. And this is a smartphone printer is what they call it. So if you go to Amazon and you look up smartphone printer, then it will help you be able to find what you're looking for. And there's lots to choose from. This is the Instax by Fujifilm. Have a fantastic day, everybody, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching the video. Have a good day.